Hello there, fifth graders. Tonight's lesson is Lesson 11-7, Understand Volume. Our essential question is how can you use unit cubes to find the volume of a rectangular prism? Please turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 11.7. What I really want you to focus on during this lesson is a formula that I will be teaching you. Our formula for finding volume will be length times width times height. The L stands for length, the W stands for width, and the H stands for height. Now whenever you look at a rectangular prism and you want to find its volume, and if you don't have unit cubes to count, you can always look at your dimensions and use our formula length times width times height. Now on today's lesson we will actually be having pictures of unit cubes to guide you. However, in future lessons, we will not have the unit cubes. So it's extremely important that you do memorize length times width times height for the formula for finding volume. Now on question number one, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this one just so you can see why. First of all, let's go ahead and take a look at our length. Our length, boys and girls, is how long it is. And here I see that I have seven centimeters in length. So I'm going to go ahead and write seven times now let's go ahead and look at our width. Our width is how wide is our rectangular prism. And I see we have one, two, three, four, five cubic centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down five times. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our height. Our height is how tall it is if you stack them on top of each other. And I see I have one row, two rows, three rows high. So I'm gonna go ahead and write three. Now, we can work from left to right to solve this or you can use associative property and group the ones you like the best. I'm gonna go ahead and work from left to right. And I'm gonna do 35, bring down my times, three. So 35 times three, if you work it out, I can see that I have 105. Now this will be 105 cubic centimeters because this is done in volume. When it's volume, you always have to talk about the cubic because they are full of cubes and they're all measured in centimeters. Let's take a look at number two together. Now remember our formula for volume is length times width times height. Let's take a look at our dimensions. This first dimension for length will be how long our rectangular prism is. I see that it's eight inches wide because each cube is one cubic inch. So I'm going to go ahead and put an 8 right below my length. Now let's go ahead and look how wide it is. I can see that I have two rows. One row, two rows of inches. Therefore, we have 2 would be our next number for our dimensions. And now let's count how high this is in inches. I can see that I have 1 inch, 2 inches, 3 inches high. Because these are measured in cubes, it would actually be three rows of cubes that are measured in cubic inches. So let's go ahead and make a three. Now, I like to use the associative property so I can do mental math easier. For me, it would be much easier to group my two and three and make six than it would be eight and two to make 16. Because 16 times three is harder for me to do in my head rather than eight times six. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my associative property and group my two and three. And now my equation is eight times six. And I can do that mentally in my head. I know eight times six is 48 cubic inches. All right, let's go on to number three. For number three, following our volume formula, remember it's gonna be length times width times height. I'd like for you to pause the video and attempt this one on your own before you press play so we can check it together. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for this one, you should have said that your length is seven feet long, your width is four feet wide, and your height is two feet tall. Now, let's go ahead and follow our formula for volume, length times width times height. So I wanna go ahead and use the associative property again on this, because to me, of course, grouping seven and four together, right here, would end up with 28. And 28 times two might be a little harder to do mentally. So I, can, I would rather do seven times 
8 because I can do 7 times 8 in my head. The reason why it's 7 times 8 is because you saw what's in parentheses and 4 times 2 is 8. Did you guys get 56 cubic feet for your answer? If you did, you found the volume for this rectangular prism. Let's go on. The next style of questions that you'll be seeing are we're going to be comparing the volumes. We want to write less than, greater than, or equal to. So our job is this. We need to find the volume of this first rectangular prism, and then we need to find the volume of the second rectangular prism. We need to write the totals of the volumes, and, and then we can compare which is least or greater. All right, let's begin. Let's start out with this very first one. Now, I can see that I have my length times width times height would be 5 times 3 times 4. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write this down below. Go ahead and write it in your book with me. 5 times 3 times 4. Now, we know in our associative property, we know we can group the ones that we find to be easy and compatible for you. So I feel like I would rather group 3 times 4 because I know 12 times 5 is 60. So I'm going to go ahead and write the value of what's in my parentheses is 12. I'm going to bring down in the correct order 5 times. Now I know 5 times 12 is 60. So I would write 60 cubic feet right there on the lines. Now we want to take a look at our next rectangular prism. Now I can see my dimensions are 6 feet long by 5 feet wide by 2 feet high. So here would be my equations 6 times 5 times 2. Now, using my property of associative property, I can either choose to group my 6 and my 5 together and get 30 times 2, or I can group my 5 and my 2 together and get 10 times 6. Either way, we'll still get the same product because remember, with the associative property, it doesn't matter how you group your factors, you'll still get the same product. I'm going to go ahead and choose to group my 5 times 2, and I would get the value of 10. And now I'm going to bring down my 6 and my times sign. So 6 times 10 would actually equal 60 cubic feet. So in this example, I can say that these two rectangular prisms are in fact equal. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at our real world problem solving at the bottom of our page. For question 6, it says a manufacturer ships its product in boxes with edges of 4 inches. If 12 boxes are put in a carton and completely fill the carton, what is the volume of the carton? Now, I had to read this a couple times to make sure I really understood what this question was asking because it sounded to me like a multi-step because I had to look at it and investigate. If you look at the first part of this question, it says a manufacturer ships its product in boxes with edges of four inches. What this tells me is that each box is going to be the same and have four inches on each box. Now to me that sounds like a cube or also known as a square prism because you would have, I'm gonna do my best to attempt to draw a box. Pretend that this is the box that they're talking about, okay? You would have four inches as your length, four inches as your width, and four inches as your height. Now, does that make sense? Let's go back and reread it. A manufacturer ships its product in boxes with edges of four inches. So that tells me each of my edges should be four inches. So I want to find the volume of this particular small box. That'll be step one. Step two says if 12 boxes are put in a carton and completely fill the carton, what is the volume of the carton? What that tells me is this. I must find the volume of my one box and then find 12 boxes to find the volume of the whole carton. So let's go ahead and do step one. Step one is just find the volume of one box. And I've already told you, each edge is four inches. Four by four by four. Length times width times height. I know four times four times four means that I can group this first set of fours. And we all know four times four is 16. And let's bring down our times four. 
16 times 4, I'm going to come over here and multiply. And I can do 24 and 6 tenths. So therefore, I have 64. So my total of each small box would be 64 cubic inches. Now that's just the total for one box. But let's look at our question again. It says if 12 boxes are put in a carton. So now I have to figure out if one box is 64 cubic inches, but I want to find 12 boxes, what would my equation be? Well, I know that one box is 64 cubic inches, but I want to find the total of 12 of those boxes. So all you have to do is multiply. So go ahead and pause your video, and I want you to multiply 64 times 12 to find out the total volume for the whole carton. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, when I did my multiplication, I ended up with 768 cubic inches. I hope you got the same volume as well. All right, let's go on to number seven. Okay, let's read our number seven together. Matt and Mindy each built a rectangular prism that has length of five units, a width of two units, and a height of four units. Matt used cubes that are one centimeter on each side, and Mindy used cubes that are one inch on each side. What is the volume of each prism? So what I know is this. Each one has the same dimensions. So I'm gonna do my best to try to draw one of these boxes, okay? So we can go ahead and write our dimensions on each side of the box. I'm gonna go ahead and make a square to start out with. I'm gonna make three line segments coming out of three of our vertices. I'm gonna connect those two and these two, and that's just an example of one of my rectangular prisms. Now, my directions say a length of five units. So I'm gonna write five as the length. Then it says two units as my width, so I'll write two for the width. And then it tells me four units for the height, so I'm going to write four right here. Now we've talked about our formula is length times your width times the height to find volume. So if my length is five and my width is two and my height is four, I can use the associative property to group. Five times two is ten and let's bring down our times four. So I know each one, Matt and Mindy, both have a volume of 40 cubic units. However, let's go ahead and see what it says. Mindy uses cubes that are one inch on each side, and up here it says Matt uses cubes that are one centimeter on each side. Therefore, I know that Mindy has 40 cubic inches. And that's going to be Mindy, because it said she was measured in inches. For Matt, on the other hand, he used centimeters. Now, he would have the same volume in numbers, but his centimeter cubes are going to be smaller. He had cubic centimeters, and we all know that centimeters are smaller than an inch. So just by looking at this, I can see that Mindy's rectangular prism it will be larger than Matt's, because inches are bigger than centimeters. Okay, for questions number one and two, you'll be doing on your own. Read the directions carefully, and then, and then answer your questions three through six for your spiral review. Pay attention on question number one, because it says Elena packed 48 cubes into this box. Each cube has edges that are one centimeter. How many layers of cubes did Elena make? When we talk about layers, we're really talking about the height, okay? She already has the first layer down. You have to know how many more layers she can use. Remember, the total volume is 48 cubes, and you already know the length and the width. So, my length is 8 times 2 times n would be my height. Actually, let's call that h. 8 times 2 times h should equal 48. All right, and then question number 2, you can use your formula of length times width times height to help you solve that one. Don't forget somewhere on your page to assess yourself. And tomorrow in class, we will investigate with finding volume for rectangular prisms in class. Have a great night. Bye-bye.